Hi. You know, I've had a long day today. Did a lot of odds and ends around the house, getting ready for a fishing trip, etc. And I had two relatively strong cigars earlier in the day. And just got back from a uh, cigar event, etc. I thought I wanted something kind of medium to end the day and to pair it with a easy to drink scotch. So I thought I would try this Monte Cristo White Series. You know, Monte Cristo is an iconic brand. This one is uh, hard to keep going, by the way. Um, it was inspired by the, the book, basically, The Count of Monte Cristo. It's a novel by Alexander Dumas. It was very popular, you know, many years ago. Primarily uh, on the floor of the factory where the tosadores, the cigar rollers, were working. And they actually had somebody there called a lector, and I really need to study that a little bit, but apparently this person would read this novel to these folks while they were rolling cigars. So it became the Monte Cristo, became the brand name of this particular line of cigars. Very well known, very popular. This particular one is from their White Series. And I thought it would pair very well with a kind of light bodied, user friendly scotch, which I'll get to in a minute. The White Series is a little bit stronger than what I remember the original Monte Cristos being. I always felt they were kind of on the light side. It's uh, an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. It seems like I'm always doing videos about those. Uh, I probably, one in three or four cigars I smoke is, seems to be a Connecticut wrapper and quite often the Ecuadorian. I do like them. You know, the wrapper, they say, and I have no means of disputing it, uh, accounts for about 70% or so of the flavor in a cigar. Um, and it, and I, like I said, I'm not sure I can prove that or not prove it, but I do find that typically the lighter colored Connecticut wrapped cigars go better with a whiskey that's not real strong, not real bold, not in your face. This has some Dominican and long Nicaragua fillers in it. Uh, it's right in the middle. It's a medium body cigar. Its flavor is, uh, in the first part of it here, is actually kind of mild. I don't even think it gets up to a medium yet, uh, but I know that it will as I get towards the middle. Um, I sort of get some uh, it's a, it's a creamy cigar, and they use that term quite a bit. It doesn't taste like cream that you would get from your cow. It's, uh, but it does have a, a creamy uh, sort of character, and it, it does evoke that, that creamy feeling. And uh, while it's not sweet, uh, sort of after you, you take some in, you, you do get a little bit of a, a hint, just a hint of honey. So I thought that I would pair it with an old standby for me, Macallan 12. Macallan 12 was the first single malt scotch I ever had uh, many years ago. I even remember where it was, it was in Chicago. I didn't even know what single malt scotch was. Some folks I was with said, you gotta try this. This is real scotch. This is not your blended doers that you've been drinking the rest of your life. And I said, okay. And uh, I liked it, I enjoyed it. Um, I've had this bottle for four or five, six years. Just haven't got around to opening it yet. Um, you know, it's a 43% alcohol, so it's at 86 proof. Um, it's interesting. I. Uh, It's not a real strong on the nose. Um, it makes you think that it's gonna be a very balanced, easy thing to drink, and it really is. This is a very, I'll use the term they use in the industry, a very approachable scotch. Uh, if you're going to introduce somebody to single malt scotch who has never had any, uh, 
this is a great place to start. Um, Speyside Scotch, it, uh, uh, it, it reminds me a little bit of some of the bourbons out there because it does have a little bit of vanilla component in there. Um, and you can definitely can tell that, that this thing was aged in a sherry cask. Uh, to me, I'm not an expert, but to me the uh, the sherry and port casks tend to lend a little bit of balance and dare I say smoothness that uh, you don't always find, uh, particularly in the single malt beverages. Um, so this one is very balanced, very easy to drink. Uh, like I said, if you're just sort of starting out with single malt scotch. You can't go wrong starting here. I could name several others maybe that are equally fine place to start. Um, I have some affinity for this because as I said, it's where I started on my real uh, appreciation of whiskeys and particularly single malt scotches. The cigar. doesn't really interfere with the enjoyment of the scotch at all. Uh, you know, I get a little bit of lingering sweetness from, from the scotch, and this particular cigar doesn't take away from that at all. In fact, I would say the same thing about this cigar. If you want to introduce somebody to hand-rolled premium cigars, the Monte Cristo White Series is a great place to start. Uh, it's not overpowering. Won't make you mad. There's nothing to dislike here. Uh, it's uh, while it it does become medium as you smoke it. As I said, it starts off pretty light. And after having two pretty bold cigars today, uh, this is a a great way to wind down and, and end the day. And particularly pairing it with a scotch that's very easy to drink. You know, there's a I feel like there's a little bit of ginger component in here, although I, I can't guarantee that's what it is. Uh, but I get something at the end that's a little bit of spice. Uh, certainly some oak. Uh, and, and these scotches tend to be, um, you know, all the Highland and, and then Speyside scotches to me tend to have a little bit of fruit in there. Uh, just a little bit. And uh, it really makes for a nice way to finish the day. Um, which means I won't be drinking this tomorrow. I'll have to find something else. Uh, uh, it's, it's a great scotch to keep around the house. It's not uh, super expensive. I honestly don't know what a bottle of this costs today. I'm going to guess it's a $60 to $70 bottle. Uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, and I apologize, but it's in that neighborhood. It's, it's certainly not the, the most expensive Macallan you can buy. It's probably the least expensive Macallan you can buy. Um, of the three Macallans that you see regularly in the liquor store, Macallan 12, 15, and 18, uh, this is, is the least expensive, but the easiest to drink. Um, I, I like the 15 a little bit better, but I've developed, a, my palate has evolved over the years, so I appreciate that, it's a little bolder. Uh, 18 is not even close to one of my favorites. It's just a very different whiskey. So uh, again, I can't recommend this uh, highly enough. It's a great thing to have on your shelf. Um, you, you won't be embarrassed offering this to anybody that stops by your house, uh, or even as a, a special occasion scotch. It's uh, very, very drinkable, very enjoyable, always. I haven't smoked a lot of these white series. And I've had them with some bourbons, and they were very fine with that. I had some with some Buffalo Trace, and the Jack Daniels Bonded that uh, is getting a lot of press these days. Uh, they're both, again, very drinkable, similar to the Macallan 12 Scotch. So if you're looking for a, a nice way to either enter into Scotch and cigar pairing, or if you're already doing that, and just want to end the day on a easy note. You don't have to think a lot about either one of these things. Um, you could be watching a movie or talking to somebody and sip the scotch and it's not going to distract you.
which is there. And I'll say the same thing about this cigar. Um, very user friendly. Uh, you can carry on a conversation and hit this thing. And it, it doesn't uh, distract you. Uh, very easy to smoke. Uh, this particular one is a little hard to draw. I've been running a streak lately where I'm finding a lot of the cigars I light up in here tend to be, uh, I don't say they tend to be, about one out of every four or five seems to be hard for me to draw. Don't know if it's me, don't know if I've got too many cigars in my humidor and it's compressing them, I gotta figure that out. It's not terrible, it'll stay lit, I can smoke it. I'm not gonna get lightheaded because of lack of oxygen, but I do notice this is a little bit of a, a harder draw than a couple of cigars I had earlier today. So again, this is my nightcap. Um, try it. I, uh, I don't think you find anything wrong with it. If you like stronger cigars and whiskeys, there are a lot of other options. But uh, if you're looking for something that's not there, in that category, a gallon 12, Monte Cristo White Series. Give it a try, you won't be disappointed. We all have a great weekend.